You're listening to PetLifeRadio.com. This is My Dog Digs Dirt, and I'm your host, Lauren Collier. Thanks for dropping by. As peak vacation time approaches, more and more of us are thinking about taking our furry friends along. In fact, some 30 million Americans say they have traveled with their pets in the last three years. Have you? Canines are the most popular traveling companion, with kitties a close second. And the good news is, it's becoming easier to take your pet along as more and more hotels and attractions open up their doors to pets. Stay tuned. When My Dog Digs Dirt comes back, we'll get up close and personal with a travel expert in the know. Robert Sinclair, manager of media relations, AAA Northeast, who also happens to be a huge pet lover. He joins me next on My Dog Digs Dirt. It's designerpetsweaters.com. Hand-knitted designer sweaters for your precious pup or cool cat. Beautiful couture patterns for your pets, including custom-knitted formal wear, casual wear, yachting, and even sports-themed. Many designer pet sweaters include feathered tammy hats, top hats, and a lot of sparkle. Each sweater includes leg loops, front paw sleeves, and leash opening. Visit designerpetsweaters.com to order your four-legged fashions today. Large or small, we fit them all. Designerpetsweaters.com Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com My Dog Digs Dirt is back with travel expert Robert Sinclair from the AAA Northeast, who is dad to three fur kids, Addie, a Jack Russell mix, Jack, a miniature pincher, and Peanut, of course, a chihuahua. Hi, Robert. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you for having me, Lauren. What else well, could we be? With, yeah. Except a chihuahua with a name like Peanut. Right? I love it. It's so cute. <laughs> it's really amazing, Robert, how the industry has changed, the travel industry. I remember maybe 10 years ago, you couldn't really take your pet anywhere, but now that is really opening up. What are you seeing at AAA? Well, probably best highlighted, the changes are, are traveling with your pet book, the AAA pet book, which is going into its know, 16th edition, coming out in just a month or so. Um, and in fact, we have a, a contest every year, a photo contest for people to uh, include pictures of their pets when they're traveling. And this year's winner comes from Connecticut, near to us in New York. And the book just highlights it. It grows every year. All the hotels, attractions, even restaurants and what have you, where you can take your pet. And a lot of the um, attractions and hotels are realizing that pets are members of the family for many people, and they're making it easier to accommodate the pets. A lot of the hotels that you go to, they'll have bowls, they'll bring uh, pet snacks for your pet in your hotel room and what have you. It's becoming a lot easier for people to travel with their pet, and when we're seeing these days, so much more road travel as a result of cheap gasoline and just record-setting vehicle sales. Uh, in 2015, with more than 17.5 million new vehicles being sold, a lot of people are out on the roads and taking their pets with them. And so many more accommodations are being made for traveling with the pet. It's, it's a great time to be a pet lover and, lover and getting out on the road. And a great time to be a pet, right? <laughs> like, who would have yeah, thought? Yeah, well, what did, It's crazy, Mr. right? Mr. Dog Whisperer said if he dies, he wants to come back as a dog in the United <laughs> States. It's, it's uh, a great life. I know. I always say when I go, I want to come back as my dog. But it's interesting when you mention even the hotels. I think a lot of people don't realize not only are they pet friendly, but they're really pet welcoming. So if someone is looking for a specific hotel, what should they look for, Robert? How do they find one? And does it depend on a uh, size? You know, I have a 132-pound Bouvier, so I always think, oh, wow. they'll be like, get out of here. But it really depends. Is that right? Yeah, it's really best to check ahead of time to see whether or not a certain facility will accommodate your pet. My wife and I have discovered that when we're on the road, sometimes uh, we just 
stop and ask, and more likely than not, they will accommodate a pet. And if they don't, they know who does. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes they, they really go out of their way to accommodate an animal uh, by having um, certain amenities, you know, pet bowls, uh, water bowls, and what have you in the hotel lobby. And we'll even go as far as delivering pet treats and uh, water bowls to your room. Some of them are just saying, okay, we allow them, and, you know, you're kind of on your own. But if you can check ahead, it's best. And, and our pet book, Traveling with Your Pet, the AAA pet book, is very, very handy for that. If you're planning your route ahead of time and you can do these things beforehand and have in mind where you can go and, and find the best facilities, we rate them and uh, talk about how friendly they are and all the extra amenities that they might have. It's, it's a very, very good book to have to plan your trip if you're going to do that, but sometimes it's, you know, folks just like to get out on the road and uh, go where the road leads them. Mm -hmm. And more often than not, they'll probably find a facility that will allow them and their pets. And I have to say, I have read your book, AAA's book on oh, traveling great. with your pet. Yeah, and it, it is. I know it's in its 15th edition, but you constantly update it. That's what update it. Uh, that's what I really like. And one thing that you do include is not only uh, travel advice, but also where maybe an emergency vet clinic might be, right. uh, things like that. I think that's important, too. I'm sure you'd agree with that because you really have to prepare. That's one of the things when you take your pet, you might not think about, but you want to make sure that you know where those things are. Well, some pets associate being in the vehicle with only going to the VEP mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, they'll be a, stuck with a shark object as a result of the trip. So some can get pretty crazy when they realize that they're about to jump in the vehicle. Uh, but our dogs, they look to go in the vehicle. We, <laughs> we drive to Florida just about every year. And our dogs are more than willing to jump in the vehicle and take the trip. And very important that folks realize that there are certain things they have to do when they're on the road with their pet that really have to treat them like children. They need to be in uh, a restrained uh, seat or uh, um, elevated platform. We have a couple of them and uh, three dogs alternate between the two. They are cinched down with the seat belt held very securely. And then there's a strap that goes into their uh, collars or harnesses to hold them in the carrier so that they don't get bounced around. There's a phenomenon known as the backseat bullet that usually refers to human beings being thrown about the interior of the vehicle in case of a crash, but it can also refer to animals and they can be injured severely or killed as a result of that happening. A lot of people think it's cute to carry their pets in their laps in the front seat, but in the event of an airbag deployment, you're going to have a pet patty. That airbag deploys with such force yes, that very uh, good a small pet, yeah, a small pet won't won't stand a chance against it. It's really meant to help uh, secure human beings and hold them in place. So, you know, taking those extra precautions before you hit the road with your pets, having them in the back seat, which is the safest place to be. Um, people might have a pickup truck or something like that, and they restrain them in the bed. That's a horrible thing to do. Yeah, that's a that's, terrible yeah. idea. They might jump out, they might try to jump out, and then the, the whatever you're holding them down with becomes a noose and drags them along the ground. Having them in the back of a camper or something like that is a bad idea. It's very important that you take the extra precautions, make sure your pets are safe. Don't let them hang their heads out the window. We see that all the time. The dogs love it. It looks cute, but they can injure their delicate eyes or, yeah. or their ears, be struck by an object or something like that. It's very important that folks really take extra care. And don't, you know, the warm weather, never leave them in a vehicle, even if it's a relatively cool day. Right. If the vehicle is in the direct sunlight, that interior can heat up very quickly. It, the interior of a vehicle easily gets over 100 degrees on a warm day. And even if it's a cold one, you know, hypothermia can set in. And you don't want to leave your pets alone because somebody might want to steal them. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that's lots, a really lots good of precautions point. Precautions to be taken All when you get on yeah. the road with your pet, and you have to think of those things. But you still want to have a great time. It's so, mm -hmm. would you say the car is the most popular form of transportation when you take your pets? Because I know now you can take them on the train, of course, on the plane. A lot of people even rent an RV. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, we've taken our pets on the plane. In fact, uh, with JetBlue, it's you could be better off buying a ticket if they let you uh -huh. for your animal. But they don't. You have to pay an extra 100 bucks each way to uh, take them on the plane. They have to be 20 pounds or less and fit in a carrier, which fits under the seat in front of you. So I haven't stretched my legs out since I've been on the plane with our pets in uh, probably three or four years oh, now. <laughs> um, and some animals don't 
do planes very well. They get very excited, and I know that people have to resort to some sort of calming medication for that to happen, but our our dogs are just wonderful. We take them on the plane all the time, but you have to know the restrictions. Some folks get around having to pay the extra airfare by designating their animals as service dogs, and then most of the time, they're allowed to fly for free, but you know we try to be honest about what we're doing. Yeah. We haven't done that. We just pay the extra fare. But, you know, without a doubt, um, according to our travel surveys, which we do for the major holidays, 90% of people who take a trip during a holiday are going to drive. Mm -hmm. So more than likely, folks are going to be traveling with their pets in their cars. And so keeping that in mind, they need to know how to handle them safely. Uh, You mentioned trains. Uh, Amtrak just made it possible for people to take their pets on trains, but unfortunately, not the auto train, which you can Ah. catch in Lorton, Virginia and take down to Florida. Right. Uh, I would be there in a minute because Uh, that's a long drive. Yeah, yeah, really, really long drive from New York to Florida, but we do it every year. And if only they allowed pets on the auto train, we would do that. But on Maybe a, they'll on change a, that, right. Hopefully. I can't hopefully. understand why they don't. Uh, they're oh, now yeah. allowing them on uh, regular train trips, like from New York down to the south and out to the west. Uh, again, you have to check beforehand to make sure the particular uh, route is one where you can take your pet. Mm. But uh, they just recently opened up the regulations to allow pets on trains. So, oh, so that's another a good great thing. alternative for traveling with your pet. Absolutely. Now, I know you guys did a survey, which this is so funny. And uh, you said nearly one third of those people who travel with their pets said they'd rather travel with their pet than their significant other. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Pets that's don't so argue funny. with you when you're on the road. You know? <laughs> that's it's, really uh, They're usually very accommodating and, and happy to get out and have a good time. And, you know, unfortunately, human beings, we have our disagreements sometimes when we're uh, traveling. And now, let me so, ask yeah, you. Robert, what would you say, is there a a favorite vacation that people are taking their pets to? I mean, a favorite pet-friendly vacation. What are you seeing there? Well, that's a good question because in our surveys, people really like to go to amusement parks and theme parks and national parks. Uh, They like the beach. They like the mountains, going over the, the homes of friends and family, very popular. There doesn't seem to be one particular destination mm-hmm. that seems you know, more popular than others as far as traveling to with your pet. I mean, you know pets love beaches. Oh, they love, uh, and yeah. Then it, yeah, and then again, that's some research you have to do to make sure that you can find a, a pet-friendly beach. And we know them all in the areas of Florida that we go to travel to. And when you get out of major metropolitan areas, it seems that uh, a lot of municipalities are a lot more accommodating about animals and having dog runs at parks and just areas where you can go with your animal and and have a good time. I agree with you because it's just changed so much. Even some restaurants allow you to bring your pet. That, in fact, is a new regulation in our home city here where that uh, if there is outdoor seating, that you can have your animal there. And a lot of the restaurants are very accommodating in having uh, water bowls and and treats available. Right there, right. But I think you're right. And that's a good point about the dog parks, too. So it would be a good idea to find that out so you know exactly uh, where you can go uh, when you get to your destination. That is a tremendous aid in finding Mm -hmm. these things out. You know, just a couple of key words in Google and Mm -hmm. a particular city you might be going to. And you can find out lots of information about areas that will accommodate pets and uh, on leash or off leash there are a lot more off leash facilities these days that are available yeah, just the, the one thing we worry about is that some people are they're they're not very how can i put it their animals aren't as friendly with other animals as yeah. perhaps they should be in the really off leash situation so you really have to scope things out ahead of time and uh, see if the situation is one where you want to let your animal run free if it's available. And also, I guess it would be a good idea to find out if maybe they had someone who could watch your pet, you know, or walk it. Let's say that you're going somewhere, you're keeping them in the hotel, and they can't come with you during the day. Maybe the uh, hotel offers some kind of service where they will walk your pet during the day. 
That's a very good point. And some of the higher end uh, hotels do that. Uh, mm-hmm. I stayed at a couple of hotels in Washington, D.C., and they had just those sort of services. In fact, they had a pet spa. You wow. Go and leave your dog there and get a massage, and they'll put it on a uh-huh. treadmill and let it get a little exercise. And uh, they have TVs there showing animal oriented programming. And uh-huh. <laughs> some of them are really over the top with uh, the amazing. offerings that they have. Yeah. Now, I find it amazing. I guess AAA was established back in 1902, my goodness. And what is the mission exactly? But obviously, it opens up and it changes all the time because here you are uh, talking about how you can bring your pet on vacation. I'm used to going and getting a trip tick and, you know, finding that out. Yeah. Well, to put it succinctly, we are in the business of making automobile travel safe, efficient, and affordable. But there are lots of services that we offer over and above. Of course, you mentioned the, the trip tick, and uh, that's very popular. And in fact, it used to be a members only service, but now they're available online. And lots of other companies are doing it, but they don't have the sophistication of our maps. Mm-hmm. Uh, AAA produced the first road map ever. Wow. In, in 1902. Crazy. And it was, yeah, it was in Staten Island. And it was pretty difficult because back then there was a real problem as far as roads and signage. There generally was no signage. My goodness. Um, and, yeah. In fact, AAA came into being as a result of vehicle owners. And back then it was uh, the car was a plaything of the rich. But in order to go from one state to another, very t- often you had to change license plates. Uh, the roads were in very, very poor condition. Oh, there was a road at all. Horses dominated at the time. There you go. Um, so the organization was formed to get common sense legislation in place that would assist the motorists in making trips across country. You know, one of the uh, one of the major things that happened. I think it was in 1917. There was a young, I believe, was he was an army lieutenant, and the army decided to do a cross country trip in order just to see about the logistics of moving men and material across the country. And one of the participants later went on to become president of the United States. And we're talking oh, about Dwight Eisenhower. That's fantastic. Oh, yeah, wow. and the the interstate system of highways that we have is actually properly named the Eisenhower Interstate Defense Highway System. Oh, it was really conceived as being a way of moving men and materials in time of war across and through the country more efficiently. But uh, that young lieutenant had that experience early on and saw what a problem it was. And later when he had the opportunity to do something about it, we got the highway system as a result. So that sort of highlighted what motorists were up against back then in uh, trying to make something happen on roads. So AAA started producing maps back then, and we continue to do so. And we think our maps are among the finest in the country. And in fact, I'll tell you a little secret that on every map, there's a fake land mark of some sort, usually a map. Ah. And we do that in order to keep our maps from being copied by other companies. Isn't that wild? That's terrific. Okay, well, we're going to take a short break now, but we will come back. So stay tuned. More on traveling with your pet when my dog digs dirt returns. The young lady from the rescue delivered happy and I panicked. She was missing hair, stinky, scabby, and I thought, what did I get us into? The cause of his issue was poor nutrition. It was neglect. The other owners didn't care enough about him to give him the nutrition he needed. But I have a vet that I trust, and she recommended Dinovite. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. I ordered the first 90-day supply, and within a couple weeks, his skin started clearing up. He didn't smell. He had more energy. He just had a glow and a bounce about him. We've been using Dinovite for the last year, and Happy the Rescue Dog is Happy the Healthy Dog. I tell all my friends who have rescues to give their dog the chance at a new start with Dinovite. It's going to pay off for you and your dog for years to come. 859-428-1000. 859-428-1000. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. Are you having trouble getting the word out about your new pet product or invention? 
Let WhiteGate PR open the gate to your marketing and public relations efforts. We've been specializing in public relations in the pet industry for over a decade. From press releases to media relations and publicity to pet trade shows and launch events to social media, the pet-friendly team at WhiteGate PR has you covered. If you listen to the wise words of Bill Gates, he says, if I had $1 left, I'd spend it on PR. Learn more at whitegatepr.com. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. <laughs> My Dog Digs Dirt is back, and back with me is Robert Sinclair, Manager of Media Relations for AAA Northeast. Robert is also a huge animal lover, owner of three (laughs) fabulous pups. Aren't they the best? Robert, uh, really, you've been so helpful here. I think, once again, the fact that more and more of us are really taking their pet along. Does size matter when you take a pet? Some people take their dogs, and often people take their cats as well. Well, it, the smaller they are, certainly the easier it is to get out on the road with a pet. Large animals, they, they take up a lot of room in the vehicle, and a lot of us are driving smaller vehicles. A lot of us are driving bigger ones, too. It was interesting that in setting a record last year, for the uh, most cars sold in a year, probably half of them were SUVs and pickup trucks. And who knows? That might be a reflection of the fact that people are traveling with large animals and true, want to have the room true. for them. So uh, that's, that's a phenomenon that uh, is, is being worked out, I think. But, you know, it is easier. All our dogs are 20 pounds or less. Probably need to be going on a diet, some of them. <laughs> Uh, but so it's a lot three, easier right? to, to do that when you're traveling with a, a smaller animal. And yeah. I think some of the uh, the hotels, attractions, and what have you might prefer you to have a smaller animal, but generally there are no restrictions on size okay. when you're traveling with your pet if they are allowed. Yeah, you have to, of course, uh, find out. Are there any vacations, Robert, that you would suggest not to take a pet on? Well, it's going to a high-end resort, they might tend to frown on those kind of mm-hmm. things, on having pets around. People might be familiar with uh, AAA diamond ratings. Um, in fact, we rate hotels and restaurants. Uh, and the coveted five diamond award is for like, the super luxurious mm. uh, high-end hotels. I'm not familiar with any five diamond properties that accommodate pets. So if you're planning to go to a you know top resort or something like that, uh, it might be best to check ahead of time. That's Generally, the the lower diamond, the one, the twos, the threes are the ones that will allow the pets. Okay. Um, so those those high end resorts might be something where you might not even be allowed to take your pet, and who knows? I mean, unless you can find. Uh, some accommodations, you know, and leaving your pet at home in a place that you consider safe and secure, Absolutely. you might have to change your plans as a result and find a place that will indeed be able to uh, accommodate uh, your pet if you want to take them along. And of course, I'm sure you'd agree that the best advice is to plan ahead, you know, make those phone calls and make sure that the pet is allowed. Very definitely. And they'll let you know forthright whether or not that pet will be allowed at a particular location. The ones that allow them seem to relish having them. They really enjoy having them, and the staff are very helpful in helping you uh, deal with your pet, you know, whatever might come up, uh, you know, finding a vet or some sort of extra service or accommodation that might be needed. We've gotten tremendous help when we've traveled with our animals on the road and in the air, and, and folks are really, they're most of the time very pleasantly surprised. Uh, especially when we travel by air to see that uh, an animal is along. Some folks will lament, you know, they worry that the animal will be making a lot of noise on the plane right. or something like that. But you know, most of the time, folks are just so happy. And some of the flight attendants, they just They must aw. love it, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they go they gaga, can, right? Who doesn't yeah, love Yeah, they can be very, very helpful. Yeah, it's um, got to make you smile. So let's remind yeah. folks about, first of all, about the AAA book. I think uh, many don't realize that you have a pet book guide, which will help making make traveling with your pet easier. That's right. It's called Traveling with Your Pet, the AAA Pet Book. It's actually going into its 16th edition. And where and can people get that, Robert? Where can our Well, certainly be? you can get it at our AAA offices, and it's got a retail price of eighteen ninety five. 
uh, digital online edition is available at booksellers and has a retail price of nine ninety nine. Generally, if you're a AAA member, you can get it a bit cheaper. It really depends on uh, which uh, AAA organization across the country you're a member of. Our dues vary. It can be as low as, I think, uh, $38 and as high as uh, $90, depending on what part of the country that you're in. And you can go and look at the pet gallery, the contest photo gallery at AAA.com slash pet book, and you can see uh, the latest winners for the pet photo contest. People have take their animals everywhere it seems ah, i love that we, so you can enter yeah, we, yeah, an upcoming pictures contest. in front of the golden gate bridge ah, i love it rushmore or uh, those big trees out in california I love those. Seen yeah towering over the over fido and folks take some really great photos um, out so on that's the, kayaking with their pets and, uh-huh. and the lake. yeah My, if i and, was if i did that mine would sink <laughs> <laughs> between her and me but but Robert where can folks get in touch with you and find out more about the AAA and all your wonderful pet services well in general no matter where you are in the country you can go to AAA.com and then it'll ask you to put in your postal zip code and that will take you to the local AAA organization if folks want to get in touch with me if they might have a question directly they my uh, email address is rsinclair at aaanortheast.com or they can go to our specific website at www.ny.aaa.com. And there's just all sorts of information to be had as far as travel and the different services that we offer. Everybody knows our roadside assistance. We have a battery service. We have AAA-approved auto repair, repair shops that we certify as being qualified to work on your vehicle. We have insurance services. AAA is the largest leisure travel agency in the country. So if you wanted to book travel and make arrangements and accommodations and what have you, our travel counselors will certainly know which locations are pet friendly. We've got the hotel and restaurant diamond ratings. We talk about the trip ticks, travel guides, maps, and we do an awful lot of work on uh, child passenger safety, on teen driver safety, senior driver safety, um, our AAA Foundation for Traffic Safety, which came into existence in 1947. Wow. Uh, every year comes out with different studies about uh, driving and safety. Uh, in fact, the latest one we came out with uh, was, in fact, about a, a pothole study. We found oh, that, boy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Be careful if you're probably, traveling with your pet, right. Well, thank yeah, you. it can be very bad hitting a pothole. In fact, yeah. there's well, it can the, be on average, Americans are spending $3 billion with a B, $3 billion a year to fix That's their vehicles crazy. because of damage resulting from potholes. Uh, don't even get me started. That's another uh, show altogether. <laughs> well, sure. Robert, thank you so much for being here. Again, it's Robert Sinclair, Manager of Media Relations at AAA Northeast. He has three lovely pets, Addie, a Jack Russell mix, Jack, a miniature pincher, and Peanut, of course, a Chihuahua. We're so happy to have had you as a guest here on My Dog Digs Dirt. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in to listen, and be sure to stay tuned for our future shows. I'm your host, Lauren Collier. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.